Well, good morning and welcome to Matins on this Thursday of the fifth week of Easter. Thank you for being with me today. The scriptures we'll be using are Psalm number 47. Uh, we're going to finish Leviticus chapter 19. And for the New Testament, we're going to move into 2 Thessalonians. And we'll begin right at the beginning of that book. Uh, but before we get into Matins, let's have a word of prayer. Would you please pray with me? Bless us, O God, with a reverent sense of your presence, that we may be at peace and may worship you with all our mind and spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship him. Alleluia. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship him. Alleluia. Our psalm is number, whoops, 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great king over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God and he is highly exalted. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, dominion of the universe is yours, for you have ascended on high and are seated on the throne prepared for you by the Father. Gather all peoples into your church and make them a holy nation, a royal priesthood, your own chosen heritage, to praise and adore your divine majesty now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Leviticus chapter 19. We begin at verse 26. You shall not eat any flesh with the blood in it. You shall not interpret omens or tell fortunes. You shall not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edges of your beard. You shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. I am the Lord. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, lest the land fall into prostitution and the land become full of depravity. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. You shall stand up before the gray head and honor the face of an old man, and you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. When a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you. 
and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall do no wrong in judgment, in measures of length or weight or quantity. You shall have just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and you shall observe all my statutes and all my rules and do them. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so we skipped a little bit, just um, just a few verses, eight verses, actually. We finished it at verse 18 yesterday. So we finished with, um, there was sort of a repeat of the Ten Commandments, some of the Ten Commandments. They were worded a little differently. Some of them went into more detail. So there's some more, um, there's some more laws given here, more statutes. Don't let cattle breed with a different kind. Don't sow your field with two kinds of seed. Don't wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. If you if you were aware of that one, this is where it comes. Um, having sexual relations with a slave. Um, yeah, when you come into the land, yeah, the, this when you plant new trees for food, you can't eat it for three years. In the fourth year, its fruit shall be holy, which is an offering of praise to the Lord. Then the fifth year, you can eat the fruit to increase its yield for you. And those are the things we skipped. So you should not eat any flesh with the blood in it. Okay. And this comes from earlier in Leviticus. It shall be a statute forever throughout all your generations and all your dwelling places that you eat neither fat nor blood. And in other places, it says, <clears throat> for the blood has life in it and the life belongs to God. So, very specific. Um, yeah, then we have... Do not interpret omens or tell fortunes, right? So we're getting into um, mysticism here. This is where humans start dealing in supernatural forces, okay? Anything supernatural, the only thing we should be dealing with is God. Anything else is demonic. It's evil spirits, okay? It's either we're allowed to deal with the Holy Spirit, which means we trust God for these things. Any other spirit we would encounter is not from God. Okay, that's the um, explanation for that, omens and, and fortunes, and mediums and necromancers, okay? Mediums are people who claim to be able to talk to spirits. Necromancers, um, I don't think you would have this in this day and age. In ancient times, necromancers, um, they were the ones who were experimenting with, with corpses, they were trying to reanimate uh, dead bodies and corpses. And that's where you get things like zombies and ghouls and skeletons. And mummies and the, and the like. So, but again, all that is, the, this is, these are forces that humans were not meant to deal with. So God forbids them because this, this is beyond, these are the things that will lead us to, interacting with the demonic and we don't need to do that so <clears throat> you shall not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edges of your beard how unusual is that the reason is because these practices were employed by cults of the dead right so this is again one of the many things that god wants his people to be set apart from the the societies the people who practice things that god considers evil and definitely the cult of the dead is not something that god wants his people dealing with because god is life you should not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves i'm sure that's the same thing yeah this Rounding off the hair in your temples, marring the edges of your beard, cuts on your body and tattoos were pract all practiced by cults of the dead. That's why that is, okay? Or why it was then. We don't really have 
you know, I guess you could say voodoo. Voodoo is a cult of the dead. Okay. We shouldn't be, in, as Christians, and certainly as Jews, we shouldn't be involved in that stuff. Don't let your daughter become a prostitute, because it could become, it could affect the whole of society. Hmm. Daughters are not property for commercial enterprise, no matter how poor or desperate the family might be, because families are precious to God. Simple enough. Keep my Sabbaths. Sabbaths. There is more than one Sabbath. Sabbaths. Israelite families participated in God's holiness by honoring the Sabbath and by respecting his sanctuary. Right? The temple. The uh, synagogue later. In this case, the um, tabernacle. Notice how he finishes each each one. I am the Lord. It means I have authority over you. I am the Lord. I have authority over you. I am the Lord your God. You worship me, not anyone else. Don't seek them out. Make yourselves unclean by them. Don't do this. Don't go to a fortune teller. Don't call the psych the psychic hot um, yeah the psychic hotlines. Christians don't do that. You shall stand before the gray head and honor the face of an old man, and you shall fear your God. Okay, this one, you know, the gray head means the elders of the congregation. Honor the face of an old man means the same thing. When honor and respect are paid to the elderly, God also is honored, feared, and respected. So we should respect our elders. We should. Treat the stranger kindly. Do him no wrong. Remember, you used to be strangers too. Right? Very important. Very, very important. Right? Love him as yourself. Treat him as one of you. Do no wrong in judgment. Don't fraud anybody. Measures of length or weight or quantity. This is how things were sold. These were the you, know, you would put things on a scale, and it's the oldest one of the oldest tricks in the book to make the scale not balance, right? So that it it favors um, the person who owns the scale, basically, whether you're a seller or a buyer. Um, some people make fake weights that are you know it says five and it really is more like eight, you know, whatever, and they'll use those fake weights to to cheat, right? That doesn't weigh that much. That's only five. Whatever's. You know. Ifa and hen, these are also Ifa was 22 liters. A hen was four quarts or a gallon, basically. Um, and so all these things were used to measure for trade purposes, right? Be honest in your business dealings, basically. I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land. This is what I did for you. If it wasn't for me, you'd still be slaves. So I did this for you, and you're gonna. You're going to do things the way I tell you to, because this is how a just and good society is going to be, how a holy society conducts itself. So, um, yeah. So this the Leviticus is most of the 613 laws, um, and the readings for the rest of this week are from chapter 23. Uh, both on Friday and Saturday. So I'll post those, but that's the chapter you're going to be in. And that has to do with keeping the feasts. Um, the Feast of Booths, which is one of the big ones. And oh, the Passover, the Sabbath, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement. So it's going to cover all those. So you're going to read about all those while I'm at the convocation. All right. Let's start Second Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God. 
for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so typical greeting. Um, Paul and his team, Silvanus and Timothy, addressing the Church of Thessalonians, offering grace and peace in the name of the Father and the Son. <clears throat> and again, he begins with thanksgiving. Be thankful for you, he says. And that's appropriate because your faith is growing abundantly. Starting off very much like the first letter, right? The love of every one of you for one another is increasing, just as he asked them to. You're doing this already. Do it more and more. And they are. This is an obedient and eager church to be a proper community of God's children. Therefore, we, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions you're enduring. They're doing well, growing in faith, growing in love for, for the, each other and for their neighbors, and they're doing this in the face of persecution. Um, so... Now, this boasting is not arrogance, okay? This boasting is they are speaking well of the church in Thessalonica because they're doing so well. Um, yeah. Specifics of the Thessalonians' suffering are really not revealed, except that it is for the kingdom of God. Christian suffering is in many ways a mystery of the faith. Um Persecution is a sign that a person is on the right way. The powers of evil are disturbed when Christ is active and when his promised coming is near. Um, yeah, so they have dealt with their affliction and the persecution that they faced quite well. And they met it with faith and they're enduring it, right? Um, and this is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you're also suffering. Right. Um, this is a clear sign to them of your of their destruction, but of your salvation. Right. That that they are being persecuted for their faith is a sign, because it's not by Christians that are persecuting them; it's by the ungodly. Okay, and that just shows them that they are on the right path. Yeah. And when you endure, when you endure that affliction for the sake of the kingdom, God is pleased with that, right? God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you. That's God's justice. God says, vengeance is mine. I'll handle it. And he will. And he will also grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us, Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, um, because they're afflicted too. They're imprisoned, or at least Paul is. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, right? God's justice will be swift, and it will be complete, 
and it will be um yeah instant i guess maybe is a better word um yeah and his mighty angels is how the lord executes his powerful judgment fire accompanies and reveals the lord as he comes to judge the living and the dead we hear about that in first peter four um and he will come in vengeance if you read daniel seven so and who will who will get this? Those who don't know God and those who do not obey the gospel. Hmm. Faith obeys and obedience is faithful. Interesting. Rejection of the gospel is disobedience to the divine invitation to faith and life. To reject it is to disobey. That will be unfortunate for those people. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. Okay. We know that for those who believe and are baptized, that we will enjoy eternal life with God. And life is being with God. Therefore, death is being separated from God. Death will, will be, in its truest form, will be what those people will experience. What, what Paul here calls eternal destruction. Away from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his might. When he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints, that's really why he wants to be there. But those who will receive his punishment will receive it on that same day. He, he, will, he comes to be glorified in his saints, to be marveled at among all who believed. Right? And that's what his saints will glorify him and will marvel at him. Because our testimony to you was believed. And they will, that means they will be among those saints. The Lord ultimately shares his glory with his followers on that day. And he is the source of glory. Um, the testimony is that Paul talks about there. Testimony, that's the gospel. He's talking about the gospel um, breached by the apostles who were witnesses of what they had seen and heard, especially the utterly convincing fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. That's the best part of the gospel. <clears throat> or the best evidence of the gospel, I should say. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. That God is going to make you, he will He will be at work in you through his Holy Spirit and will lead you to the life of faith that you will continue to have resolve. You will do good works and that will be done through his power and you will grow closer to him. This is how the gospel is supposed to be at work in a community of believers. So that resulting in the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, that you, that church, would be just in how you conduct yourselves, how you live your lives. People could just look at you and they know that you are glorifying him, right? The name of Jesus may be glorified in you, and you will be glorified in him because, he, like it said, he shares his glory with his children according to the grace of our God, not because we deserve it. Because God loves us and he is gracious and merciful. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up there today. <sighs> because we will get into yeah, tomorrow's reading will be chapter 2 and Friday will be chapter 3. So right, let's conclude the liturgy. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. This is the day the Lord has made. Alleluia. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. 
This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Alleluia. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Let us pray. Father, in your love, you have brought us from evil to good and from misery to happiness. Through your blessings, give the courage of perseverance to those you have called and justified by faith. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So sorry. Let us pray once more. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds, we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And that concludes our matins for this Thursday. Thank you for spending this time in the Word with me. And thank you for giving back to God a little bit of the day that he has given to you. Um, so, as I said, uh, this is our last video for this week. So I'll post the readings um, both for tomorrow and Saturday. And then we'll we'll get back to it on Monday. So uh, I'd encourage you to keep up with them because um, we're in a series. And we'll keep going through that series, I believe um on into next week so so um yeah i look forward to joining you on sat sunday for uh our weekly worship and then on monday for our next uh, round of matins so uh thanks again for being here today i wish you a blessed rest of your day and a blessed weekend and until we can be together again whenever that is may god bless and keep you <laughs>